Good morning. Uh, so while I was sitting in the lobby of the hotel this morning, eating breakfast, um, I started to read Job. I started to read Job, and then I, I took my meditations outside. I was sitting on the curb, and I just rested on this particular part of the scripture, and I knew it was a word for somebody. I knew it was a today word. I knew that it was an in-season word. It's not just for me. It's for so many people. So I want to read this to you. I'm going to be reading out of the New Living Translation today. I know that's not everybody's favorite, but it's okay, right? Because um, we go by the leading of the Holy Spirit, not by, you know, our, our opinions and um, what we feel like doing. So not that I don't like the new King James version, not that I don't like King James, not that I don't like the English standard version, but this is what we're using today. Amen. All right. So this is Job. It's uh, chapter 23 and we're going to start at verse 10. But he knows where I am going. And when he tests me, I will come out as pure gold. God knows where you're going. God knows where you're headed. God knows what your next step should be. He knows what job that he wants to plant you at. He knows the location that you need to be in in order to make the greatest impact. He knows who he wants you to reach. He knows where you're going. You don't have to know where you're going. You just have to trust. You have to trust in the Lord. The Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. Who goes ahead of you. Who is outside of time. Who is preparing a way even now. Because he knows where you are going. who is laying out the foundations of what you're about to step into because he knows where you're going. Who is preparing you through trials, through adversity, through the cutting of the heart, through the circumcision of the heart because he knows where you are going and he knows what you're going to need when you get there. He knows, he knows the pressure that you're going to be facing in your next season. He knows, he knows the demands that are going to be placed upon your life, where he wants to take you. He knows how much opposition you're going to face. He knows how much they're going to try to discredit you. He knows how much persecution you're going to face and slander and venom. And he is preparing you for a time such as this. It says next, and when he tests me, I will come out as pure gold. When he tests me, not, not if. This says when. That means you will be tested. You will be tested and tried. You will be tested. Your loyalty will be tested. Your allegiance to your Father in Heaven will be tested. Your trustworthiness will be tested. When you say something such as, send me, I'll go. That will be tested. He'll test you to see if you share the gospel in your own backyard. Because how are you going to go to the nations if you can't even go to your neighbor and tell him Jesus saves? How are you going to go on to do missionary work and, and spread the love of Christ and the gospel if you're going to shrink back at the opportunity to tell somebody that Christ died for you on the elevator? Amen. When he tests me, I will come out as pure gold. We face all kinds of tests and trials as uh, children of God. And our first instinct is to say, Lord, I need a reprieve. Give me a break. Make this stop. You don't want it to stop. 
you do not want it to stop. Let me tell you why. Because when he has tested you, you will come forth as gold. He is purifying your heart. He is purifying your heart. He is renewing your mind. He is making you a brand new creation from glory to glory. And that requires testing. That requires being tried. That requires being crushed. That requires being broken. Hear me, please. That requires relying on a strength that you don't possess. So God is going to show you how much you need him. By showing you how weak and how frail you are without him. God is going to show you. That you're not as far along as you thought you were. God is going to make you come face to face with the things. That have made its way into your heart. That would only hinder the ways in which he wants to use you. Which is why. You are being tested, which is why you are being tried. He is exposing things and saying, here's where the problem lies. Here's where the problem lies. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to come out and I'm just going to say it, right? Because it's really good to be transparent. God's chastisement and his rebuke is part of his love. The Lord had recently given me a schedule to follow. And not that I blatantly disobeyed him. But I was stubborn and I was hard hearted and I was rebellious. And I did it sometimes and I did it and I didn't do it other times. And I overslept when he told me what time he wanted me to get up. And there was a reason why he's doing this. He wants more structure in my life. He wants more discipline in my life. He wants more order in my life. And in order to do that, in order to do that, in order to prepare us for what he has next, we need to be tested. And so I failed that test. I failed that test miserably. I'm just telling you how it is. I failed that test miserably. And I have repented and I have been deeply grieved. Because I know how important it is. I know how important it is. And when he tests me, I will come out as pure gold. It's okay. Maybe you failed the last test. You're going to be, you're, you're, you're going to come out as pure gold from the next one. That's a word for somebody right now. Maybe you failed the last, last test. Maybe you were tempted and tried and, and you gave in. Maybe you went back to Egypt. Maybe you went back like, like the Bible says, to, like a dog to its vomit. Maybe you thought it was going to be better back there. And you found out it wasn't. It's okay because when he tests you next time, you're going to come out as pure gold. You're coming out. What does that indicate? That it's going to come to an end, whatever season that you're in. If you're in a place of deep anguish and pain, grief and loss, you're coming out. It is not going to be this way forever. That is a word for somebody. You're coming out. If you're in a place of deep adversity, hardship, Every single time it appears like you took two steps forward, you're taking two steps back. You can't hold on to money to save your life. You're coming out. Do you hear me? So, this is a word for somebody. You're coming out. You're coming out of this trial. You're coming out. You're coming out of this season of isolation. You're coming out. You're coming out of this, this, this black cloud of depression and heaviness that seems to have come over you and, and you can't shake it to save your life. You're coming out. You're coming out and you're going to come out as pure gold. We need to be tested. We need to be tried. We need to be crushed. We need to be crushed. But there's a reason for that. God needs to apply pressure. He needs to apply pressure. There is no growth when your life is easy breezy and you never have any difficulties. 
The growth happens when you are under pressure. The growth happens when you have to be stretched or you have to, things are being expected of you that are going far above and beyond what you could normally do on your own. Maybe your workload is just, it's too much for you to handle, but it's not too much for God. Maybe you have been assigned to take care of a sick family member and you're just saying to yourself, I I don't even know how I can do this. I have no idea where the patience and the strength and the time and the energy is going to come from. It's going to come from the throne room of heaven. That's where it's going to come from. You don't possess it on your own. Get into the secret place. Pray and draw from the everlasting wellspring. He said, come to me all who are weary. And I will give you rest. God wants to give you rest. Let's continue. For I have stayed on God's paths. I have followed his ways and not turned aside. Don't look to the right or the left. Stay on the road that God has for you. And if you're not sure what that is, spend some time with him. Invest time in him. He says, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all other things will be added to you. That means all of your other worries and concerns will be met, but you have to put God first. Stay on his paths. You don't want something outside of God's will. There are divine appointments scheduled for you. There are places where you need to be, where you need to be planted. That's why inconveniences and delays, even though we look at them and we get so agitated because we had a plan and it's not really working out the way that we wanted to. We need to look at inconveniences and delays as opportunities. Okay, God, you broke my car down. Who needs you? Who needs you? Who needs to know about you? Who do you want me to testify to? Order my steps. The Bible says the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. So if you broke your car down, there's a reason. If you ran out of gas, there's a reason. If you missed the train or the bus, there's a reason. Try to find out what that reason is instead of getting frustrated. Everything is an opportunity. And when we start seeing things as as that, everything is an opportunity. As long as you are staying in the will of God, he wastes nothing. He wastes nothing. Every conversation and interaction that you have with another human being is purposeful. Look for where seeds can be planted. I have stayed on God's path. I have followed his ways and not turned aside. How many of us want God's will fully and completely? I want you to really search your heart to find that answer today. Do I want God's will? Do I really want what God wants for my life? Or am I still pushing my own agenda? Am I still pushing for my plans, my aspirations, my goals, my dreams, the relationship that I wanted for me? Or am I relinquishing all control, realizing I don't really have control of my life anyway? God is sovereign. He's on the throne, not you. He's on the throne, not you. And what you have chosen for yourself, that includes the job that you're in. That includes the deals that you make, the business that you've started, the calling that you think you've been called to. You need to make sure before you go stepping into something that God didn't call you to do, that that is exactly what he wants and not something that's in the desires of your own heart. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for this word. I have not departed from his commands. We are commanded to walk in love. It's really easy to do that when people are loving towards you. But do you know how difficult it is to walk in love when people are hateful and spiteful and vengeful and vindictive and nasty towards you? 
But God gives you everything that you need to bear up patiently against every temptation, every trial, every adversity, every spiritual attack. He gives you exactly what you need. Because apart from him, you can't do anything at all. I have not departed from his commands. How many people know there is reward to our obedience? I want to say that one more time. There is reward to our obedience. Favor and blessing is attached to your obedience. Sometimes someone else's salvation can be attached to your obedience, which is why if you've been made a watchman on the wall and you've been given a specific time to, to pray and intercede for others, you need to make sure that you're doing that because in Ezekiel we're told their blood will be on your hands. So in other words, you, you don't ever want that. You don't want somebody's blood on your hands. You don't want them to miss what God has for them because you shrank, you shrunk back or you became fearful or you didn't deliver the word that God gave you because you weren't sure whether or not he said it or you didn't deliver the word that God gave you because you were afraid what everybody else was going to think and how they were going to respond and react. God does not take pleasure in our shrinking back. I have not departed from his commands. When God gives you instruction, follow it. I'm speaking from experience. I got heavily rebuked in this area. And out of God's love, out of God's love, that's what we need to understand. God's rebuke, his chastisement is not because he's cruel and not because he's malicious and not because he wants to st stand back and tell you, I told you so. It's out of love. It's part of his grace. I have treasured his words more than daily food. Do you treasure God's words more than daily food? Do you understand that there, there, is, there is life in this book, that this book is living, living and active? This book is alive because Jesus is risen and Jesus is the word made flesh. Do you treasure his words more than you treasure daily food. I'm going to give you one Bible verse. <laughs> Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Meaning the word of God is so much more important than whether or not... <laughs> You eat. Okay, this is your daily food. This is what sustains you. You need to be in God's word. You need to be meditating on scripture day and night. And by meditating on it, don't just read to read. Really soak it in. Absorb it. Let it marinate. Let it get deep inside your heart. Contemplate its meaning. Take it back to God and say, what does this mean? Ask him for wisdom. Ask him for knowledge. Ask him for understanding. Ask him for revelation. That's what the Holy Spirit is there for. But have treasured his words more than daily food. But once he has made his decision, who can change his mind? Once God has made a decision, who can change his mind? The next verse says, whatever he wants to do, he does. Whatever he wants to do, he does. He is God. He is God. And at the end of the day, he knows what you need better than you know what you need. He knows what will benefit you and what will hinder you. He knows what environment is no good for you to be in, whether you want that job or not, whether it's more pay than you've ever received in your entire life or not, whether they have an amazing benefits package or not. He knows where you are needed. And our heart is deceitful and wicked, so we can't be led by our emotions. We need to be led by the Spirit of God. 
We need to be led by the Holy Spirit. He's a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Are you letting the Holy Spirit lead you or are you leading yourself? Are you letting God order your steps? Or are you taking steps towards things that you don't even know whether or not they're for you? Are you knocking on and opening up doors without asking the Lord for first if that is your door? Whatever he wants to do, he does. He is the potter. We are the clay. Who are we to look at our creator and tell him that the way he's molding and shaping us, he's doing it wrong? Or to think for a second that we could make a better decision for ourselves than he can. Or that we know what's best for us better than the one who breathed life into us and knows us better than we know ourselves because before we were formed in our mother's womb, before our name was picked out, before we started that, that development, <laughs> before we were being developed in the womb, and becoming who we were becoming, God knew you. Intimately and personally, he knew your spirit. So who are we to tell him how to do his job? So whatever he will do to me, whatever he has planned, he controls my destiny again I need you to understand, you don't control your destiny. And I don't know <laughs> how many people have tried to get off the path that God had for you and they've been rerouted really quick. Have you ever had that happen? Have you ever gone to pursue your dreams, your goals, and your aspirations? You've gone your own way. You've literally gotten off track. You've taken a detour somewhere. You thought it was God's plan, but you didn't really consult with him. And all of a sudden, you know, you started that new business or whatever. And everything has just been falling apart since then. Or maybe you relocated. Maybe you moved to a new place because you felt like you were being led by God. You felt like you were hearing from him, but it was really your own wicked, deceitful heart and your inner desires, but not the desires of the Lord himself. Do you want your desires or do you want God's desires for you? Because I can promise you, I can guarantee you that God's desires for you are always going to be better than anything you could ever choose for yourself. He has plans to prosper and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. There is purpose attached to your life. And many of us are actually walking outside of that purpose because we're not letting the Lord lead us. We're not seeking the counsel and instruction that he was sent to give. Before a Jesus ascended to the right hand of the Father, he said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. But I'm sending you a comforter an advocate, a counselor. Have you been sent a counselor that you don't even consult with? Are you looking for the Lord's leading or are you trying to be the driver of your own life? God is sovereign. He is on the throne. So if you start to get off track, there's a reason why it's not working out over there because that's not where he wanted you in the first place. And if he shuts a door, it's because your time is up. Now you may have even known that your time was up. He may have already started to make you feel uncomfortable in that job or a job that you once loved all of a sudden. You're not so happy with anymore. Maybe new management came in and changed everything around. New policies, new procedures. And it was just 
God's way of gently pushing you out. But how many of us know that if he gently nudges you and pushes you out, but you buck up against that because we're stubborn and rebellious, that he has a way. <laughs> he has a way of making sure that his perfect plan is fulfilled. So he will do to me whatever he has planned because he controls my destiny. Praise God that he controls your destiny and not you. He controls it, but you know what? We, we have to submit. He controls it, but we have to submit to his will, to his way, to his authority. Is Jesus your Savior or is he your Lord and Savior? Have you made him Lord of your life? Do you seek to please him and not yourself? Do you want what you want and refuse to compromise with the things that you want, even when he has told you repeatedly, I didn't send that. That's not yours. That's not my will. Are you trying to force your own will in your own life? We have to relinquish control by acknowledging that we never had control to begin with, but he still gives us free will. And that free will, if we're not careful, we can start to dig a pit and climb into it because we keep on making decisions that were never part of God's plan. We keep making decisions that were never part of God's plan. But I want you to know something else. Just because you are struggling, just because you are experiencing opposition, just because things are not going according to your plan, just because it feels like you are being tested and tried on all sides does not mean you aren't in his will. And so instead of praying for God to take you out of the season you're in, instead of praying for God to take the pressure off, instead of praying for God to get you out of the situation Pray for him to use you in the situation. Stop praying for him to change the hearts of the people around you and pray for him to change your heart and your mind so much that it starts to impact your entire environment and shift the atmosphere by the power of his spirit. Don't ask God for a rescue mission. Sometimes that's, that's not... That's not in your best interest. He's trying to work something out in you. He's trying to draw forth and pull from you something that you don't even know is there. 